Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to part of our webinar series. And today we're going to be talking about apparel design in the 21st century and how technology has changed over the years and how you can use technology to your advantage when creating an apparel line, creating your samples, and also manufacturing. Um, so I'm gonna jump right in and I'm hoping this webinar lasts, you know, 20 to 30 minutes. There is a chat feature. Um, feel free to chat in questions. There's also the Q&A feature. Feel free to um, chat those in. And I have Sarah here with me, um, who you can't see on the screen, but she's here to help answer questions. And then at the end, if there's any questions she feels like we should talk about, I will, um, I'll be talking about those uh, on, on screen at the end. So let's get started. All right, so for those of you that don't know us, um, we are Clothier Design Source. I'm Mindy Martell, I'm the owner of the company, and um, we own a development house and a small factory where we create prototypes for people. We help people launch their line. We um, also create, or we also do small manufacturing runs all in the USA. Um, and we've broken our process out into four steps. So step one is design, step two is prototyping, step three is technical design, and step four is manufacturing. So these are the steps that we go through when somebody comes to us with an idea for an apparel line. We make sure we go through all four of these steps and in order. Um, just a side note, we do have a YouTube channel where this webinar, many other webinars, um, panelist discussions, interviews, tips, things like that. We try to post something about once a week on the channel to help um, apparel entrepreneurs get tips on how to, how to maneuver in the apparel industry. So please check that out. All right, today you're going to learn how technology is going to help you launch your line. Um, we're gonna talk about how you know finding factories in the USA that invest in technology will help with your overall labor costs and your quality. And we're also gonna talk a lot about how 3D virtual prototyping is changing the industry and how that helps with timelines, costs, and gathering early sales and marketing. All right, so the first thing that I wanna address is, you know, what costs, what are your highest costs in the US versus overseas? So if you're making something in the US, you've got a lot more flexibility on lower quantities, you've got a lot more communication flexibility, your timelines can be quicker, um, your quality can be better, but the thing that costs much more than de um, designing overseas and manufacturing overseas is labor. So one way to, we've worked to reduce labor in the US is by investing in technology and helping cut down on labor costs by using different, different things that are newer um, in the industry. Uh, overseas, the labor is not that much. You know, A lot of them aren't making a living wage, I'm sure. You've heard a lot of the horror stories of sweatshops and conditions and stuff like that. Um, but labor does not cost that much overseas. So if we wanna make in the US, we have to get creative and we have to use technology in, in helping reduce the labor costs. And so we're gonna go through some of those things that you should look for if you're looking for a USA factory to help reduce those labor costs. Um, so, one of the first things that happens is you sketch your, your ideas. You sketch them or you hire a company like ours to sketch them. Um, in the past, hand sketches were the only way. And really that's only changed in the last 15 to 20 years. Um, but it's, it takes a lot longer. If you make a mistake, you have to start over, you have to erase, um, you, you know, all those kind of things. 
And so almost all of the industry has moved into CAD sketching. And um, we've kind of combined fashion sketching with flat sketching. So as you can see, this jacket on the right side still has some movement to it. It still has a fashion look to it. You can kind of get a feel of what the garment's going to look like. And at the same time, it's doubling as a technical sketch and giving you some of the trim details and stitch details and paneling details. So it's kind of a dual purpose sketch and that's really helped cut down on labor. Um, in the past, when people were making patterns, um, they would always hand draft. There are still many factories in the world hand drafting patterns and that's just fine. It, it works great. It just does take longer. It takes more labor. Um, we've moved to everything here where we draft our patterns in a CAD system. Um, so, you know, we're not starting on paper. We don't use any rulers. We don't use any pencils, things like that. We're starting all in the, the CAD system and drafting in the CAD system, which again, if you make a mistake or you want to change something, it's you know, 20 times faster. Um, than if you're doing it by hand. You can add the seam allowances with a click of a switch. You can add, you know, notches with a click of a switch, things like that. Uh, another thing that has really revolutionized the industry is if you do have hard copy patterns, if somebody has made patterns for you by hand or you've made them yourself, um, there is digitizing tables and we, we have that service here. So we can take the pattern and we can scan it in on the table, which then puts it into our pattern drafting software. And so we can make any changes to it in the software much quicker. Um, so there's kind of a combination of things still happening in the industry. Lots of people are still hand drafting. Some people start by hand drafting and then digitize it in and then continue working on it in the CAD system. Um, so that is an option of how to cut down on labor. And then um, the, last, the last thing as far as drafting patterns go is you can see this apparatus on the left-hand side. And this was this machine, I believe is called a Dario Gradometer. Um, and so grading, let's talk about grading. So once the pattern is done, you have to create it in different sizes. And it's much more complicated than just kind of blowing the patterns up in percentage-wise because the body grows at different rates in different places. So your neck will grow at a different rate than, than maybe your waist will grow. So there is kind of a, there's an art and a science to it. So um, the biggest thing that's changed by doing the patterns in a computer system is the grading goes much, much, much quicker. Uh, in the past, and still some people um, are using this system, there's this apparatus that will help you draft patterns in all the different sizes that you're going to offer. And then on the right hand side, this is showing um, how, you know, how it can be graded in the computer and it is much quicker. I just went away. There we go. Did you do um, yeah, so that is another way. It definitely gets up much quicker and reduces labor. And this is um, my favorite thing that's happened in the last, you know, five years or so in the industry. And we do offer this service here. Um, you know, there's other places that do as well. But this has really helped cut down on the labor and the costs in in the prototyping phase and the sample making phase. So what this is, is we can, we can make 3D prototypes of your product before ever going to cut and sew. Um, we can have fit sessions via web with you and we can show you how a product is going to fit and we can have custom sized avatars. Um, and so I have a little video here that I am going to show you.
Now we're going to talk about our 3D prototyping. So first we start with a pattern such as this. This is a bike jersey pattern. And then we're going to take an avatar that's going to be custom to your brand's body measurements. And we plug in all the properties of the fabric and we start virtually sewing the garment around the body of the avatar that we have created. One thing that's really cool about this is we can actually see where all of the drag lines are going to be and all of the fit problems that we're going to have and we can make adjustments before actually sewing the prototype. And then as you can see, we can try out different prints, different colorways very easily without ever going into cutting and sewing and printing. So in this case, this client was able to try out different sleep colors, different print colors, um, and very easily you know, make changes before spending all of that time and energy into cutting, sewing, printing, and all of that. Another thing we can do is we have a tension map. So um, we can see where the clothing is tight and where it isn't tight, where it's blue, it's loose, where it's red, it's kind of tight. Um, and so here's another example of a onesie. This is a Nordic ski onesie. And we start started with a woman avatar. This is a full bodysuit thermal suit. Um, and so again, we put in the properties of the fabric. How much does the fabric weigh? Um, what is the stretch properties of the fabric? Um, things like that. And we also can put in the texture. And then we virtually sew the prototype up, putting in all the stitch constraints. And we can see how the garment's going to fit. So that's one purpose for these 3D prototypes is you get to see how they're going to fit. You get to see different colorways. But another really cool thing that's emerging in the marketplace is you can take these prototypes and you can market them and sell them. Um, you can use them you know, for marketing purposes on your website or the prototypes can look so real that you can actually start selling the garments. Um, and you can do that with the help of the 3D prototypes we deliver to you, and then in conjunction with a new company called Serve, S-A-R-V, um, you can take the 3D images we give you and they can turn them into a retail-friendly um, image just like this shoe. So in conjunction with what we deliver you and with Serve, you can use these on your retail site to sell. Um, I'm going to recap the video and how the 3D virtual for prototypes work, but I just wanted you to see it, um, see it in action in the software. So how it works is you choose your fabric, we help you decide what fabric that's going to be, and then we enter the properties of the fabric. We're entering, you know, how heavy is the fabric, how stretchy is the fabric, how stiff is the fabric, the drape of the fabric. So we enter that into the computer system. And then we make a pattern. So we do have to make a pattern before, you know, making the virtual prototype. Um, and then the computer system virtually cuts out the pattern out of the fabric that we've indicated we're going to use. And then we take the pieces and we put in different parameters for stitching, and we virtually sew up the sample and put it on the body. And we can, you know, we can have a fit session with you via web, um, or it can be in person, it doesn't matter, but we can look at the garment and we can see exactly how tight it's going to be somewhere, how loose it's going to be somewhere, how long are the sleeves, where's the neckline falling, we can take care of any fit issues right away before going into the actual prototyping. So that really cuts down on time and costs. Um, another thing that the 3D virtual prototyping is really great for is, you know, these, if you see here on this left side, these are 3D prototypes we have made of a bike jersey for a client. And so we were able to play with different colorways, different prints, the scale of the print, you know, like, like these flowers, for instance, um, started much smaller 
and the client wanted to see them, you know, bigger. So that was very easy to just just go and change that on the 3D prototype be, without actually going and getting the fabric printed and cutting it and sewing it and you know waiting for that whole process to happen and then realizing you want to change it. So much easier to change custom colors, prints, and fits. Um, you can take the 3D prototypes and you can actually sell with them. Um, for instance, this client is using our 3D images on their website. They're selling the garments um, with the 3D images. So they saved money on not having a photo shoot for one, and they were able to get gather pre-sales. So while these images are up on their website, they can start selling while we are actually manufacturing so they can start selling product before even the manufacturing run is done so that's a huge advantage and then another thing that has just happened very recently is there is this third party company called SIRV S-I-R-V and with our 3D images that we create of your prototype in conjunction with their services now they can they can make it a retail website for your product where the consumer can sit and spin the product um, just like I was showing you at the end of the video. The consumer can look at the product from every angle and, um, and make it very easy to very easy to sell. How are we doing Sarah? Oh, okay. Okay. All right. All right. So does this mean I'm kicked up? Let me skip that slide. Oh no, there was three, three more videos I wanted to show you, but they are having technical difficulties here. Let's try. Okay, so just a couple more things about how the industry has changed. Um, so for manufacturing, you're, going to want to find people that have some automatic cutting. Um, we do a mixture of both of these in our facility, just depending on the order and its size. Um, so this video on the left-hand side, I'm just gonna play a short clip of it, but it's gonna show you how um, you stack the fabric when you're creating a big order. And then you use these knives and you cut out the different pattern shapes with the knives. So I'm going to show you. This actually is not our facility, but this is, um, you know, very similar type of facility. So this is showing. I wonder if I turn it down if you can hear me talking. So this is showing um, how the fabric is getting laid in several layers. And then right here. So this is how, um, so you lay the several layers of fabric, you put the pattern on top, and then this knife here is showing it getting cut. And so that's that's one way that people people do it. And then where the, the technology is moving to is in this video, they're showing um, where you can lay the multi layers of fabric. This vacuum will suck all those layers down. Um, and then using the computer system that we've already put the pattern into, it has the cutting machine that can cut out the different different layers. So again, that's cutting down on labor. And that's one thing that's happening in the industry. And then um, the last thing, which we do not have in our facilities here, um, but I have seen it out in the world, our actual robots that sew your clothes. Um, this is something that really only works if you're producing you know, tens of thousands, hundreds, hundreds of thousands of a garment, and then you can program different stitches into these robots that are, 
that sew it for you. And I'm going to show you the video. Um, otherwise, in the industry, sewing, the actual sewing process, has not changed much in the last hundred years. It's still sewing machines. It's still a person, you know, feeding the fabric through the machine. Um, but this is somewhere where, you know, I've seen it moving to, and maybe someday we'll be seeing this more and more. So I'll show you the video. So this particular robot is programmed just to sew this one seam over and over and over. So again, it really only makes sense if you're sewing hundreds of thousands of units. Um, you know, of, of one type. So that's kind of a cool thing. Um, all right, so that's, that's really an overview of how, how technology can help you, you know, get your prototypes done quicker, faster, cheaper, some things to look for when you're shopping for factories.